So, um, so my name is Niall Flores. I'm from Centralia, Illinois. That's about an hour east of St. Louis. I'm one of the co-leads for the WordPress Meetup group in St. Louis. I'm also an organizer for WordCamp St. Louis, which is mid next month. You should go to it. Um, <laughs> I run Blondish.net, so I've been doing website design and development for about 15 years and blogging about 16 and a half years now. And so I started off more of a hobby blogger and then kind of uh, back then everybody was kind of fly by the seat kind of stuff everybody just was learning it was all DIY kind of stuff and so by 2009 I switched my personal stuff off my blog and totally went to teaching people how to do what I do um, making money blogging creating a website maintaining it and exclusively on WordPress so this talk is on social media 101 for WordPress um, I don't like to say I'm a guru or an expert or influencer and everything because I kind of avoid those terms. I let you decide this kind of stuff. Um, so this talk, like I said, it's kind of a broad one. So I'm not going to go generally like on Facebook. You can at the end ask specific things like about Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and Pinterest and everything. These are really general stuff. Now, if you've been on other social media talks, you've probably heard of other really great advice. In fact, I've actually heard it through the great friends some of them for some of them and I tweaked my my presentation to remove some of those so on um, maybe another WordCamp I might do this talk and add those back but you've already heard some of them so why should I keep repeating what you've already heard yesterday so I'm going to answer what social media is um, specifically to this type of talk answer why why you need social media a lot of people ask what? Well, why do I really need it? Share plugins and tools to hook your WordPress site up to social networks. And share some social media tips to get you going. Oops. So what is social media? Um, in terms of this talk, we're talking about social media marketing. Well, there's a difference. Um, this is more of a technical term. Social media marketing refers to the process, process of gaining traffic or attention through social media websites. And then social media itself is a catch-all term for sites that provide radically different social actions. And anything that's linked to here, just since we've come to the first link, th these will be on SlideShare. I will upload it and then get it on Twitter and We'll, we'll get it out to you guys so that you, because there's going to be a lot of resource links out of this. I am a big resource sharing pe person. So kind of give you an idea about uh, a general social media marketing plan and the reason why I have this is all of this is you're going to rinse and repeat. So you, you want to define your goals. You do that in your business plan, defining your goals. Find your target, find, uh, I don't know why it says and, but find your target audience. You need to know your audience. It's really important because if you're targeting the wrong audience, whether it's age or gender or whatever it might be, um, you're going to miss out on a lot of things that you could be get, get making money for. Measure, measure your success with tools. A lot of people don't really do that. How do you know how much you're... If you're bring, how many likes and follows and how much engagement you're ha doing if you're not measuring it. Create content. I'm, I've, a lot of people say just create content. I say capitalize it by creating content on as many mediums as possible. It's very important to know that your audience consumes content in different ways better. They like video or they like audio better or they like infographics or memes or whatever it might be. Do a little bit of everything so you can capture much more attention. Promote content and where possible even syndicate it. Syndicate it like uh, out to like HuffPost or Forbes or those type of places or other places that are very influential, influential in your niche that have a lot of traffic and they're gonna bring you some traffic in and, and other and clients and, and uh, make, your, make you some money. Convert your visitors and followers to customers. Um, I'm gonna modify it. How many of you are here are just bloggers? No, yes, okay. Well, subscribers. So that in the case that you do sell 
you can convert, eventually convert them to customers or doing affiliate marketing to them or anything else. And then of course, make money. Any of these you'll end up modifying, like define your goals. You're going to go back and do that and then just do this process over and over. So why do you need social media? I love to share the um, Field of Dreams experience. It's not the first time I've done this, but this is the first time actually somebody actually, I found a meme out there that fits this. So I was like, <laughs> finally, because I didn't want to do it myself. But uh, literally, there are a lot of people out there, they build it, nobody comes, and then they're like, I'm so broke, I don't know what to do. So uh, I've modified this, if, they build, if you build it, they will come, to if you build it, you must promote it and engage with others, and then they will come. Uh, so uh, these are some th truths and everything, and this is very important because I've actually been at other work camps and sat with people at their happiness or bar or community lounge, cause they're synonymous, that uh, they did not understand that they actually had to talk to people on social media. That's what social media is all about. Now, I don't laugh at them or anything, but I kind of just sat there and it's like okay I think we're having a mini workshop right here and there so just like send them lovingly in their beginning so they kind of understand you have to do these are the things you have to do so you do need to hook your site up to social network sites I'm gonna modify that not only do you need to hook your sites up to social network sites you need to hook your site up to Google search console and being webmaster Yes, because social search is just as important. Um, if you realize your, your search results on Google alone are based on your preferences and your location. So it's important that your website uh, is crawled by Google Search Console or Bing Webmaster properly so that you can be listed say if you're optimizing locally like whether you are a business or a blogger that are specifically targeting Kansas City you want to show up in those results you hope you show up in somebody else's results you hope you show, show up even in your results you can't even see your results on your phone that's a big problem because they actually should when I look up blondist.net at home my, my site should show up You do need a gauge of people, I've already said that. And you cannot expect traffic by search engine alone, especially when search engines are, like I said, more social oriented these days. So what can you do with social media marketing? You can inform your followers about information in your industry, and educate them about your products, guide people to the answers they need in order to make informed buying decisions, make uh, connections with other influencers and, and possibly build strategic strategic partnerships I have I, to where I came here today I cannot credit myself alone the people I have met have helped me become who I am and those the people that you meet will also help you like People who, if some, for example, Syed Balki of WP Beginner even just gives me a mention online with his large followership. And he, he also runs Optin Monster and many other places. He's also syndicated across Forbes and HuffPost and all these other places. So for somebody like him to say, yeah, you should go to her, her site and everything, or you should check her out and everything, that's a help for me. He's an influencer. Sure, we both do the same thing. We both speak at, speak at WordCamps, but he's like higher up on the chain. I'm, I have, I'm full of gratitude if I get even one mention out of him. So uh, you could build trust and followers with your clients. That's a big thing. If people don't trust you, they're not going to buy from you. They're not going to subscribe. They're not going to do anything. They're going to they're going to forget about you. Go elsewhere. You know, they will never come back. Where does WordPress fall into this? So your WordPress site's content, you can actually leverage it to make money with it or get subscribers or 
followers, the raging fans, raging negative fans. Yeah, because there's I don't know why they would like you and and say bad stuff, but sometimes negative stuff can help too, because you can always turn it around, and then you get people say, "I'm so sorry, I." I totally did not get you. Now I get you. I'm so sorry. And it's, it's, you're like, that's okay. That's okay. You know, I got, you brought me some attention. I was able to say, this is why I'm not this way. And I'm not somebody negative. Like, don't follow her. She's not cool. So all you have to do is create content and share it on places like Google search, Bing search, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and more. I like to share like some of the ideas for content types. You know this is a long list and everything, but it's kind of a more of a resource idea kind of list. Because these are things that people are like, well, I just blog all the time and so I don't do video or I don't do any of these other things and, and then they don't know what types of content they can do. So like lists, people love lists. They eat them up. Another big one that I see are infographics, memes, and how-to guides. Like long how-to guides. Like people may not read them right away, but they will bookmark them and keep coming back to them over and over and over again because it's a re valuable reference for them. Roundups, for example, 15 of the best women to follow in social media for 2018 or something like that. And so these women are people that you recommend, not people who you're trying to follow from other lists, people who you think are awesome so that they, people can get an idea of not only who you are, but it also builds a little uh, relationship between you and those women that maybe you've never mentioned them before. And they're like, oh my gosh, you mentioned me and everything. And it doesn't matter what your followership is, they're full of gratitude. Guest posts, if you have like a fresh face, or whether it's an influencer or, or, you, uh, or somebody really new to blogging that, that seems to be like they're going on the up and up, they're saying all the right things that people really need to say and it's congruent with what your business is. Um, ask me anything. I see this on uh, uh, some of the places where they'll invite somebody and they'll ask questions, they'll either do a live video or literally just put it blog post and tell people ask questions and literally that person will come back and answer the questions in the comments. So all of a sudden we have a post introducing this person asking people to ask him questions and there's a ends up being a load of resources and engagement in the comment section of your site. I mean you could do that even on Facebook too. You know. You can do it on Twitter. You know, there's been a character hopefully not as you know they're not going to have with with Methuselah type answers, but you could, since we, we can do a lot more characters, you can get better answers and lots of resourceful ones. You can thread them. Podcasts. And you can do podcasts? Awesome. You can even advertise on podcasts if you haven't already. I mean, I'm sure you already know this from listening to other ones. You can go out and get sponsors for these. Um, freebies, of course. Freebies, it kind of encompasses like how to guys if it's something free. People just love free. You know, some of it might get annoying sometimes, but what you give out that's free, they'll eat it up. So, now this is just a resource list. I'm not going to go through all of them. You can reference them later and everything if you need ideas. Uh, so, going into social media tips. Uh, measure your social media stats, likes, clicks, follows, engagement, and uh, in some instances if you're advertising how much you're making, how much is per click, like on Facebook ads and everything else, it'll tell you how much it costs per click. Add your site to Google Analytics, track things, you can also track links if you don't want to use some of the social media. Um, analytics like Hootsuite analytics or anything else, you could still use UTM parameters in Google Analytics to track 
those links from social media that you're pushing on Twitter and Facebook and all these other places. And you can still shorten them too. Add your site to Google's con uh, Search Console. Definitely uh, do that. If you have Yoast SEO, it's a little bit easier to do that. Yeah, you're welcome. I wrote the tutorials on their knowledge base. <laughs> uh, add to Bing Webmaster. Reason why? Bing Webmaster is at 20, what, over 26% uh, percent market share, and believe that stat what came from like about a year and a half ago. So at 26 market share, I think WordPress is like what 30%. In their niche, so like you start kind of paying attention, just like back in '95 when uh, what it was 19% market share for Microsoft. So everybody's like, yeah, maybe we should be using Microsoft and Microsoft Word and all these other Microsoft products. <laughs> Use hashtags. Um, this is debatable because some of them just doesn't don't work. This is, it takes research to use to know what hashtags are being used and if it really works. So. If you're not seeing much of a trend on a hashtag, don't use it. You see like a dozen posts on it and they've been from like six months, two years ago. Don't, it's not worth it. No, no, nobody's looking at it. Um, what the tr trend.com, you could check and it measures when's the last time something's been new and if it's actually trending right now. Um, sometimes even like it'll tell you who's the influencer like say if it's like a conference like inbound 16 or 17 or whichever year and I'll say sometimes um, who was like rocking out that stream. Um, uh, Instagram is a big on hashtags and while you could use broad like singular terms like for, I'm going to use nail polish one since I, I have a hobby blog. So sometimes I use glitter polish, okay? And sorry, man, yeah, I'm talking about nails and nail polish and everything, but we know glitter is a thing. But so I could do hashtag glitter. Yes, it's being used. It is actually a trendy topic. However, it would be better that I say hashtag glitter nails mean more specific. And I don't have to use the other one, but I still use the broad, I do use the broad term. You're more likely to get better traffic on longer tail, more specific uh, hashtags. So I have one, I have cherry blossoms right today. Cherry blossom nails, and all of a sudden I'm like getting like uh, traffic from all sorts of people for, uh, that are looking specifically for cherry blossom nails. But I'm also using cherry blossom, and they are actually looking for that kind of stuff too, but I'm, not, I'm getting more hits on the actual specific one rather than the general term. So I don't know if, if that uh, seems understandable, but it kind of works like that in, in search engine. Uh, you know, whenever you're doing keyword research, <laughs> long tail is, a, is definitely a thing, knowing specifically what people are looking for and not just general terms, longer ones. Stay on top of trends. Like whatthetrend.com for social. You can even get, look, up, look it up on Google, uh, Google Trends and everything too. On top of make friends. It's perfectly okay. The, if you think somebody else in your niche, uh, if, let's rephrase this. If you heard the term like uh, the pie is infinite, there are plenty of pieces of the pie to go around um, in like web, WordPress web development. Somebody else who also speaks at a WordCamp, I'm so happy they're in the niche because there are so many different website owners that actually need help. And so I am enthusiastic about sitting in on their topic and, and sharing information and I would never be intimidated by them because they have something valuable to share with the community in general. So the pie is infinite. Make friends. So, uh, more social media tips. Be consistent with your brands across uh, channels. That's personality-wise, and I would suggest if you're not using like same um, slugs or um, that's a WordPress term. Um, like for example, your usernames should be consistent across channels. Um, Blondishnet, 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 Facebook, Twitter, whatever it might be. 
I should have those. Well, I don't always use my Instagram one for Blondish Net. Yeah, every, every so often, I still have an Instagram for Blondish Net. Um, add content to you that uh, your visitors will find value in. Um, just don't put anything up that you always think are, are a little bit funny. Like check it out. Make some commentary why you think why you think this is great and you saw some other people use it and ask them what they think about it. Ask, ask questions. People, people will respond to that kind of stuff. And even if it's a meme, hey, is that, that was funny. What do you think of this? So add links to your so, uh, social handles on your website. This is at least not as bad as some of the other stuff, but people are, are actually doing it, but there's still people not doing it. So if you're not, you haven't, I'm not saying put all of your social handles on, put the major ones that, uh, that you are using and pushing a lot of valuable content to. So you don't have to put <laughs> Vine on it. I don't know who uses Vine, but if you're using stuff like that, okay. But if that's your channel, fine, put that up there. If you're not using Instagram, don't put it up there. You, if you're doing Facebook and Twitter, great. If you're on Google Plus but you're not using it at all, don't put your Google Plus profile on there. <coughs> Make it easy for your visitors to share your content by adding social share uh, buttons. A lot of people forget to do this. This one still even today. Um, uh, I had a client that she just turned around and says, well, can you just install the plugin? Because uh, I gave her some recommendations. I was like, okay, that's fine, but I, now I have to go and charge you when you can, I, I just gave you something that only takes like two minutes to do. And that was fine. Um, if, you, if people want to hire me to put social icons on their blog, and that's all, that's your money. But, um, Make sure it's easy to share. Uh, some people will just install it and they won't <laughs> test it out. And they find, other people find out that it's conflicting with something else on your theme or some other plugin. And in that case, all of a sudden, you don't have any shares. You wonder, you have, you have these buttons up and you're wondering why nobody's sharing. And you're like, well, I got traffic and I have engagement, but no shares. Um, and not everybody's going to tell you. Oh, these don't work. Sometimes you have to discover it yourself. Definitely mention influencers and your niche. It, like I've kind of uh, hinted to, it's, it does build a relationship with them. Also, uh, establishes some credibility so you're not the, you don't have the soapbox effect where everybody thinks you're the crazy lady and shouting at everybody like, you should do this. Keep your channel active with fresh content. Um, don't wait three months to do the next post, especially on Facebook, even if it's a more of a play-to-pay system these days, that uh, you should keep rolling out content to it. Just, I know for some people it's a little, it seems a little discouraging um, because literally, when I started on Facebook, there was so much reach. It, was, it seemed like this is so fun. And then they pulled the rug. It's like a little bit by little bit from me, you know, from everybody. And so, so then all of a sudden, yeah, you're paying to play for, if you want more reach. Number of followers are not important. It is quality over quantity. I don't care if I have over uh, 93,000 followers on Twitter. I'm looking for engagement with these people. That's more important. Relationships are important to me. So I always do my resources or try to do a lot of them toward the end because this is a lot of them. Um, looks like I might have some time to go through some of them and everything. I know it's a lot. Like I said, it's going to be on SlideShare. These are going to be completely available. You'll be able to click on them and everything else. And if you have problems with that, you should be able to download it as a PDF. If you still have problems, talk to me and I'll get you the PDF version so that you can actually click on everything and have the resources on handy for yourself. 
so some of these tools are things that I've actually used, whether uh, past, present, or other ones that um, I see a lot of my friends using and that I've played with and I think, hey, these are pretty handy. So I wanted to give a few like paid ones, third party tools, and some free ones. So Social Web Suite. Um, they have a 14-day free trial. They actually actually have a WordPress plugin that you install, and so it can help you track uh, everything. Um, you can actually, for their 14-day uh, trial, it opens up to like their their uh, at the night. If you do the 19 per month, subscribe that for four, the trial, you get to everything in that package. You're not limited on for during the free trial. And you could just poke at it and see if you like it. Uh, it has a lot of great stuff. You could actually uh, um, schedule old, old posts out on this one. I love that you could do that. Because that's a big thing. If you have content that you've written six years ago that still is true today, you should be pushing it out. People forget about it all the time. Hootsuite. I love Hootsuite. Um, they do have a free version. You can publish out to three social accounts. You can do basic scheduling and basic analytics. Um, I use their pro version, and it's $14.99 a month. These are not, none of these are affiliate links. I don't, that's not me. That's not how I do that I, on these talks. That's just not classy at a word camp. So um, you can try it out. I really recommend at least trying it out. Um, if anybody wants to just see how it works, uh, feel free to hit me up in the community lounge and I will open up and show you exactly what it does on what I do with it with because I do multiple channels multiple presences and everything else so not just myself but my clients WordCamp St. Louis uh, I've done WordCamp US and in Hootsuite as well I, and so it's really flexible so that, can you say yes. thank you um, buffer there are a few people actually I talked to at this conference that use it. There's nothing, I'm gonna have nothing against it. I just don't use it. Um, you can free to publish to three th social accounts, a scheduling posts or to Twitter, Facebook. I think Google Plus is one of, are one of them. Um, you can also, um, they have a browser extension. So like if you're on a website, you can share that link to and schedule it out. Um, to your social channels. If this then that. Some people get intimidated by this but it is free and I've linked to the actual WordPress section all the little modules that they have that you could do all sorts of stuff. Everything that there are more things than what that says right there. If you're a Tumblr person you can cross post to Tumblr if that's what you want to do. Uh, our WordPress RSS feed to Twitter, not just your own, other things like, for example, in my niche, TechCrunch actually happens to be in my niche, so I push some of that stuff up. Web design, Smashy Magazine, uh, for the WordPress, WPBeginner.com, I push their WordPress feeds into mine so I can share their valuable content that is related to what I do. And I love those sites. Why would I not share the sites I love? So uh, you could push uh, to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and more. They have far more on that. You just got to look at the whole list. There is a huge list of places. It's, and the thing is, it's free. So a lot of, the only thing is, is it doesn't really measure, me, do any measuring tools like Hootsuite. And I love Hootsuite's analytics. Uh, I know this is a lot. I mean, a little bit about everything. Uh, Instagram feed, basically showing some of the Insta your recent Instagram pictures onto like maybe a sidebar or onto a specific page if you have a, a page specific for Instagram. YouTube embed plugin, if you do a lot of YouTube stuff and you have a YouTube page or if you want to embed something to a post, you can uh, embed your uh, YouTube one, uh, videos there. Yoast SEO. Um, they help with installing the open graph for Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest um, to your website. So everything like, for example, featured image, title, and description of your, your post, 
looks kind of pretty on social networks. So, revive old posts, which used to be t uh, uh, tweet old posts. Uh, you can schedule out. It will automatically schedule for you. And you can set the time for it to tweet out to, um, you know, Twitter old posts. And you say for, tell it how many days back it can grab from. Um, Prover they do have a pro version that goes for other social networks. Pinterest pin it button uh, on uh, image, hover, and post. Pretty much title says it all. Next script, social or snap, we call it. Um, you can schedule out all your posts through that. Share this, share buttons. Now there, there are a lot of people that have preferences. Uh, usually it's like design-wise that they want a specific type of social share button. So just because I uh, suggested these doesn't mean there aren't more that you can say, hey, I kind of like that better. Go for it, you know, as long as you kind of vet it out. Um, how many people or active users there are and see if they actually do have some uh, positive not fake rule <laughs> uh, reviews so uh, yeah so I'm pretty open these are just suggestions I have used them in the past and not have problem mass share if you like uh, Mashable's share buttons this one kind of is like that one if any of you use jetpack publicize is on that. Um, it's completely okay. Uh, the only time I ever fool with that is on the WordCamp sites because it's automatically hooked in with those sites. So uh, I use, I, I don't find anything wrong with using publicize. It does what it does. You can even put, uh, for Twitter, you can put hashtags in there. Um, if you, you and they don't have to be the same thing. For It can be per post or per page so that you could push that out to your social network so I kind of like that because that actually um, over time has become a thing so I'm glad that they actually added that so it's less for me to say I'm just gonna share this and then but I have to manually share it and then add the hashtags so now I can just automatically do it so um, there are a lot of social media websites and marketing and business websites but these are ones I love the most um, first one is social media examiner there are all sorts of different authors here um, I have an open invite to write there anytime um, I haven't taken it up I'm too busy writing elsewhere <laughs> um, Kim .com. she's in a lot of like social media uh, marketing world and all these other conferences she's really great she, and uh, she has a lot of great content on her site on uh, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or whatever else she has a lot of great posts Razor Social there's a lot of content marketing in partic uh, particular but he does have some social media as well but uh, um, Ian Cleary actually run runs that he's from like the UK he's really good Re Rebecca Radish, um, she's kind of like Kim. She's done social media marketing world and all this kind of stuff. She also worked, uh, writes on Social Media Examiner. If you are on Pinterest, I really recommend just like gobbling up all her Pinterest articles because she has some awesome tips on there. Quick Sprout, that's a lot of content marketing by Neil Patel. Um, you want to get be more of a whiz about getting more traffic to your blog articles and everything else. <laughs> That's the site to go to. He's been around for a very long time in the blogging community. Blitz Metrics, Dennis Yu is part of that. Very influential guy. Um, very humble guy as well. Um, Gary Vaynerchuk, not so humble, but he has he has this in your face kind of thing going. But it works. It really does. And so. He kind of like if he's not your kind of thing, uh, then fine, that's okay. But if you 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 can get past the in your face kind of thing, then you will get a lot of great content for, from Gary Vaynerchuk. He's been everywhere. I don't know how many of you have heard him, but he's been about everywhere, including inbound and uh, in many other big giant conferences in just social media marketing and marketing in general. And he's been on television just. Uh, so many different th places on uh, being a CEO and and so he has a lot of great advice on being a business owner as well so 
um, say thank you. I always have to say thank you. If I don't, then I, I sound like a jerk. Um, and uh, you can follow me at my website. And you can subscribe to my uh, newsletter for week weekly tips. It's all free. I, I don't. I don't do the affiliate marketing on you and mine. I, that's not where I make my money and everything. And it, it, I don't think, for myself, I've never been in a affili like affiliate marketer. I've always like been just straight from, this is me. So you can follow me on Blondishnet. If you follow me here, please say hi so I can follow you back and we can engage in everything else. I love it. So I know people and everything. Um, this will be posted to slideshare.net um, uh, for slash blondish net. I am in the top 5% more most seen on slideshare. And um, you can follow me also on LinkedIn, same username. So um, any questions? I think we have, what, what 10, minute, 10 minutes. All right, and we'll go, just in case if it, we have multiples, I'll go back to front, so. You're first. Okay. Um, so you were talking about the hashtags, okay. and um, I like that if you use the um, more broad category, that they might have more uptake on the long tail. Um, how, how would you actually, if you're trying to um, start a trend on a, on a hashtag, um, especially if you have like a closed group, does it make sense to do that? How do you do that? So you're being like pretty uh, specific. Like for example, uh, we used to do have a chat in St. Louis for our social media group that no longer exists. I don't know why. Uh, we used to have STL chat a hashtag on Twitter, and so all we were doing was trying to jump on hashtag STL hashtag St. Louis, and and. Sometimes we get people from out of town because sometimes some people would jump in and say hashtag blogging or hashtag social media or hashtag this, whatever. And people look at those ones. Those are pretty general and that works. But like for St. Louis, we were, we were always pretty consistent about the majority of the people being from St. Louis. So if you're actually, so you already have an established group, are you looking to attract more with that? Are you, okay. So what you're going to have to do is while you're using that one, you're going to might have to branch out on relevant ha hashtags that are associated with your group. And then ask people, hey, this is the topic tonight, and can we try to use these terms or for our hashtags so that we can hit those people and maybe bring some fresh faces in that maybe we have some guest, guest pe you know, not speakers, uh, uh, guest tweet chatters, you know, so you could get it like an influencer or something like that, and you all have a Q&A on your, your chat, just like blog chat that's just massive. Um, but um, that should work a lot better as trying to uh, bring in other terms that are related to what you guys do. But you still want to try to use your ter the, the one that is for your, your group. Yeah, I mean, as long as, and, and also the time that you have it. If you, so like for example, if you see more of a trend at a certain time for like hashtag social media, you want to make sure that you have your tweet chat around that time so you can hit more people. So, okay, so she was asking if, uh, about the, I, I'm trying to be good about repeating and paraphrasing, so if I can't say it exactly, you correct me, please. Um, so, so if you're asking, if you're putting like a social media feed, like Instagram pictures in your sidebar or wherever, or its own page or something like that, into your WordPress site, uh, but you're supposed to be public, you, you know, putting content to your website, like blog posts or whatever it might be, um, how does it affect that or? Are you so my example would be I work with somebody to put content on their LinkedIn page. 
Okay. But then we try to do some blog posts on their website, and I'm struggling. To, it's very technical, so I need them. To, so I, there's a role in getting that blog content. It's not as refreshed as often as the LinkedIn. So I'm like, if I put a LinkedIn, I don't know if that would help. So. The, I see see a lot of just like in like people consume content in different ways like from images and video and audio and all that kind of stuff um, they consume it wherever is more convenient for them whether it's they're hunting down on the professional channels like LinkedIn or if they're on a group in Facebook or just regular channels from a fan page or for some reason maybe somebody publicly posted on their personal profile something that was pretty good um, and you think oh man they're just losing traffic and everything no don't even think about that if they're engaging on that post and at least they have a link your raging core fans will actually go to it, do those things and, and look at those things definitely put a link down like even if you're putting a meme put a link to your website or to subscribe or something like that or or occasionally hey I, well yeah I'm on Twitter too and we do we put some other content here you can occasionally just change up links and everything or if you like this you might like this post and then link to one of your blog posts you want any engagement wherever you can be it's just in the end directing it whether in the conversation where you want it so eventually you say well I see that you're doing this I've answered this and everything you like this hey why don't you uh, I think you'd be interested in subscribing to my newsletter it's free we have all these tips free tips every week I think you'd enjoy it so or hey you know you want to learn more about this I have a webinar and it's like it's on Udemy and it's like $9.99 or something like that. That's not much money and people are like, cool, I think I'm going to do, do that. So it's like, perfect, you know. And it's not spammy because you're already having a conversation with these people. You, you, ha you didn't start with the spam first. You, you suggested it because you saw some interest. So, um, so it's okay to have the feeds on your website. Because maybe they're like, oh, wow, they're on Instagram. Let me go see what else content they have. Because not everybody shares the same exact things in the same ways. So they want to say, hey, I love pictures. I wanna, I'm want i so visual. I like that. And they're like, wait a second. They have a webinar. Let me go back to the website and go subscribe to that or whatever it might be. So I'm saying you don't have to put everything. Put the ones that you're trying to direct back to what you want them to do. That's the thing you do on social networks is eventually you want to direct them to the subscribing and the buying and everything else. So hopefully, was that an answer? Uh, the gentleman in the back. <laughs> uh, you mentioned it but didn't have it on your slide. The website you're looking at hashtag. Uh, it's called What the Trend, like trends, like trending, uh, dot com. Used to be what the hashtag .com. Another one I like, but they have a. Uh, you can see only a limited amount of uh, sources, um, and from multiple social networks, is I believe. Is it BuzzSumo? BuzzSumo.com. Um, if if you like what you see there, you can also use that to push like really good content into your other channels like in between the other stuff that you share that's yours um, they share they tell you how many times it's been shared on each one of the social networks like Twitter Facebook Google Plus uh, and I, f I believe I don't know if it's like the first five results in the specific category but the you could pay to look see more stats which can be valuable if you're really trying to to uh, find out what's exactly going on in your niche that people are really looking at and find extremely valuable. You could also use it for your own content marketing plan. You read their article, you say, I can do this better and write your own in your own way. So yeah, whatthetrend.com and now uh, I, can, I can add that in before I upload after this. So if that helps, I'll actually add both those websites. 
Okay, so we'll probably have an extra slide in there <laughs> just for those three. Um, okay, so I get her and then, okay. My question's in two parts. Uh, you're talking about using Yoast uh, to get better SEO with the Google Analytics Search Console and Bing. When you sign up in those areas, are you trading something to those search engines when you do that as opposed to just having it out being registered? What kind of phone are you use? I'm just, I, I, I almost. IPhone. Okay, so it doesn't matter whether you're using iPhone or Android. Uh, Android's more hooked up with Google. You're always sharing data all the time. Right, but I'm asking, for so, example, they, they troll your email subscriber list, for example. No. Uh, you, if, so I'm wondering if you're, if you're basically, if you're hooking yourself up to like Google Analytics, Google Search right. Console, right. and they're trolling you or, or gathering this and, and selling the crap or spamming them or something like that. Well, okay, so like you're in mail, say if you're in MailChimp uh -huh. or AWeber or Constant Contact, doesn't matter what you are on your email list, where you get it. No, they're not going to get that subscriber list because that's some elsewhere. However, like on their platforms and other places that they have like a tracking, you might see some advertisements from their products and everything else. And also with Google, especially, you, like I was saying earlier, your search results depend on what you've already been searching, all the interest that you've had, as well as location. The reason I'm asking is if one went with like that Hootsuite that you like, because mm -hmm. they have analytics, would you still need to go? Okay, if you're wanting to get into advertising and everything else, the only trusted place for analytics to give out to an advertiser so that they will advertise on your website is Google Analytics. No, I'm not trying to get Well, you still want Google Search Console so it can track the health of your website and, and how your site, site is seen on so the, the uh, results. I mean, that's very, very important. You want Google to get all your content as accurately as possible and index it ap appropriately. So, yeah, sure, it's another thing you have to sign up, but it's for a good cause. Because, say, for example, you get hacked and you're not on it, you're, you're going to end up having, if you have the red screen, you're still going to have to go back and once ever your hack is clean, you're going to say, hey, it's clean, please take the red screen off. So, or we're done, or one question or no? One more question. One more question? We'll get this one, uh, this one over here. <laughs> if we, so if you get the one and then the two, like afterwards, I'll, I'll, be happy to answer it here in the community lounge. Okay, so uh, one of the things that I heard at one point was that there are particular times of day to post like uh, brand love or news. Is there anything to that? Or do you just post like one So, yeah, there is some to it depending on your niche and where you're located. So if you live over here, Obviously, you're probably not going to, and, you're, and your target audience is specifically this hemisphere or this country, um, or locally, you're not going to post when Russia's up or something like that. You're going to post when you're going to look for the times that people are engaging online. So you can see stuff like that. You can, what the trend.com can tell you somewhat when the times are. Sometimes, uh, if you're using Hootsuite with their analytics, you can actually sometimes see whenever uh, people are actually all like clicking the most. So th the thing is, is to research where where your target audience is based on your target audience. So I think we're done. So if you have any questions. Whether, it doesn't matter whether I'm in the community lounge or not, feel free to uh, attack me gracefully. Uh, <laughs>